first order of business is Rick Sinker. Oh, we're talking about selling our yes. own properties. Um, I have a couple things just to hand up to make uh, a little bit closer. Absolutely. Yeah, you need to use the board, feel free. I don't. I'm not that sophisticated. <laughs> Okay, so you've asked me to come here to talk about auctioning off your tax-acquired properties or other properties mm -hmm. that you may have. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. Uh, I'm a, uh, about two years ago, I became a licensed miniature auctioneer also. Uh, essentially what we do, and I've done probably 10 auctions, and uh, what we do is you hand over to me your properties that you want to sell. Essentially what I like to see is at least half a million dollars in assessed value. Uh, just um, to, because it is a time consuming process and I'll, I'll tell you what we do. I don't think we have that much. Okay, well, you have, if you have something <laughs> close to it, you know, we'll, we'll talk. It, it's, I'm doing one for uh, Wakefield right now. There, there's also slightly under half a million. Um, but one thing that you have going for you is you're close to my office, so that's less travel time for me. Uh, essentially what I do is I take your, your properties, um, and with the assistance of your town administrator, I get copies of the certified mail notices that, that go out. Uh, if you have prior deeds, fine, tax collector's deeds. And we have a, a website, which is New Hampshire Tax Deed Auctions. And um, I just want to take one and pass them down. There's one for you. And two, I, no, you only get one. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's just a, a sample of the, the front page. Uh, this little picture on the front rotates to different properties that are for sale. And at the top of the front page, you can click where it says Next Auction, Wakefield, New Hampshire. And uh, then anybody who is interested in a property can click and get the tax assessment card or the prior owner deed or the location with, with a map pointing to where, you, where the property is and uh, et cetera. So they essentially have at their fingertips all the information that they would need. For those who don't have a, uh, uh, are not on the internet, we also prepare a bidder's packet. This is one that we did for City of Claremont. This is single-sided, they end up being double-sided, so it would be half as thick as this. But this essentially has all of the same information that's on the website, but for people who uh, don't want to be on the website. We uh, make those available at the town office. Uh, we put somebody in charge to sell them at 10 bucks a piece, uh, just so that somebody doesn't come in. If they, we made them for free at one point, and people would come in and grab like half a dozen, that's yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, uh, Ten bucks, uh, if they want. It's it's a comprehensive um, uh, document of all that you could possibly want to know about all of the properties. <coughs> we also put an ad in the the newspaper for one or two weeks. Uh, I put signage on each property, uh, essentially two signs. One is specific to the the date, time, place of the auction, as well as a property number. And then there's another sign that just has generic information about how to contact New Hampshire Tax Deed Auctions. Uh, once we have um, started that process, we, we, we field all the telephone calls and uh, <coughs> obviously conduct the auction itself, uh, which we would hold at a in town here at whatever building you, you tell me. It could be in here, it could be um, you know, wherever we, you know, the townhouse might be a nice place to have it. Uh, we generally uh, get between 30 and 40 registered bidders. We require a thousand dollar deposit from each bidder just to keep out the so-called riffraff that might just want to bid and then walk out of the room. Um, we usually take up backup bidders too because we've had situations where the primary bidder doesn't uh, go through and uh, all this process uh, in essence costs the town nothing uh, because the way I get paid, my firm gets paid, is to charge a 10% buyer's premium. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? Oh, um, <clears throat> as far as your list, I don't know what your, your list of properties 
uh, is, but if you have some properties that you've held on to, uh, the, the rule of thumb is that people believe you can't sell a property unless you've held it for three years. That's not true. You can sell properties as if you just acquired them as long as you send out a letter to the former owner 90 days in advance of the auction, giving them the right to redeem. Uh, there is a new uh, law that is going into effect July 2. Uh, previously, um, if someone lost their property, you would send them a letter, they'd have to pay the 15% to get it back. The 15% is a penalty that uh, every former owner pays if they lose the property. Um, but they've now made it zero uh, percent if the person has lost the property and it's their primary residence, mm -hmm. which you know, I think is good. They've also reduced the 15% penalty to 10%. Uh, so, uh, if there are, and there will be more instances where there are excess proceeds, now that they've reduced that 15% down to 10%, and excess proceeds are when uh, we end up selling the property for more than the sum total of back taxes, the penalty, and incidental and consequential um, expenses, in which instance um, we also handle that at no cost to the town because we get paid out of the excess proceeds, and that's by statute. So we have to file an interpleader uh, a complaint with the superior court, <coughs> notice the, uh, the mortgage holders, the former owners, whoever else has a, a lien hold interest in the property, and then we let the court fight it out. I'm usually more uh, involved in that, uh, trying to negotiate between the various parties to get it resolved because the court doesn't really want to handle it by themselves. So um, mm. that's it in a nutshell. Um, when somebody successfully bids, they get a memorandum of sale. This, you know, that's just a sample that you can. Um, <coughs> and here is just a uh, copy. I only have one copy of uh, proposed agreements. This is a generic type agreement that I use with all of the uh, towns and cities I've represented. Uh, <clears throat> and oh, one important thing is we also obtain from the town the names and addresses of all the abutters to all of the properties because those are the people who tend to bid uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of these properties that you get are, are land or landlocked pieces of property or, right. or whatever. Um, so we make sure that the, the uh, abutters have actual notice of the time, date, and place of the auction. So, what else do you need to know? Um, we do have one property that is, um, we've only had it for two years. So. Okay. So that would automatically, automatically. put your auction right. more than 90 days out. Right. And I would suggest, um, with the new law coming into effect July 2, that that would be the, the start date of the 90-day letter going out. So July... August, September, we're looking at having it in October, which isn't bad. Um, okay. Uh, I just prefer not to uh, be ripping up signs or trying to jam signs in the ground like I was in Claremont uh, when the ground was frozen solid. Um, <coughs> Do we have a uh, minimum bid price on these properties? I generally, I've never had a minimum bid price on that because part of the reason that you're doing this is to get these properties back on the tax rolls. Right. So I think you, you get rid of your inventory all at one time, no minimum bid. That's a big draw for a lot of people as opposed to having a minimum bid. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, some of these properties you're going to make your money back. Some of them you're gonna make more than your money back. Um, and some of them you're gonna sell for less than what the taxes are owed. But <coughs> setting a minimum doesn't help you all right. that much because if we go through the auction, you still own it. You're gonna still have to get rid of it someday. So um, mm -hmm. then, what does the minimum bid become? So yeah. just get rid of everything. If you have other properties that you have acquired that uh, by other than um, tax uh, deeds, uh, we can sell them too. We just designate that uh, it's not a tax acquired property. So um, you know, big, big, big deal. We did that with Claremont with a couple of properties. Not sure. Have you um, 
seen a better time of year than others in this area to do auctions? I haven't. Um, the, the one we did in Claremont, um, I was a little con bit concerned about because it was in, I think the actual sale was in March, yeah, March 19 of this year. And I was thinking, eh, people are going to, you know, what about snow? That was the, the highest attended auction I'd ever seen. Um, and they only had nine properties, and uh, <coughs> it went off great. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really say, you know, summer better is, uh, you know, well, we'll know because the one I'm doing in Wakefield is June 25. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really think it makes any difference because we advertise the heck out of it, um, which is the key. And uh, we also have a, an email list of uh, probably 100 people on it now that are realtors, you know, statewide, just investors. And, you know, once we get the okay, uh, we send out emails, which generally go out about 45 days before the actual date. Um, and we get a lot of, lot of uh, questions, a lot of input um, for every auction. So we've, we've sort of got it down after, you know, so many trips around that. Is it to the town's advantage to clean up the properties? <sighs> it depends. I. Uh, did one in Hanover um, where they just had one property and it was a, a very valuable property and it was a total disaster inside. So I recommended to them that they clean it up because it was so bad you couldn't even really walk through it. I mean it was just disgusting. Um, so they, they cleaned it up and I think that helped. Um, it would be a case by case basis, Lloyd. Sometimes you know people just leave a bunch of stuff out in the yard. Um, I probably wouldn't unless it's a hazard. Um, the idea here is that you put as little money in as you can, get the, the biggest return that you can. So. Yeah, with the two-year one, we thought that instead of cleaning it up, we would try and sell it as is. Mm -hmm. A lot of cans on the property, uh, trash, basically. It would be poster child for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, on that one, I probably wouldn't bother. Um, <coughs> yeah, we prefer not to if somebody... Yeah, why, why spend the tax dollars yeah. up front? Um, you know, obviously I'll be taking a look at all these properties. Um, mm. I do that personally, and uh, first I go in, I, I, you know, I take pictures of all the properties, uh, and I might be putting up the signs at the same time I take pictures, because if I can put the, the signs up and then take pictures of the signs, on the property, people mm -hmm. will know exactly what property they, they need to see. So it's a lot of work, you know, behind the scenes. That the um, the auctions, I generally hold them on a Saturday at ten o'clock, uh, and um, I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, that's generally what it is. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> people who work and uh, right. therefore attend, so right. that's, that's great. Uh, all right, so we're going to have to uh, add up our properties. I don't know what it... Um. Well, if, if Karen just wants me to get me a list at some point... Do you have you know, the information? Uh, oh, it was in the tax cards and things? Yeah. yeah. They should be right behind us. Karen and I used to live close to yeah. one <laughs> She Actually. babysat my boy. <laughs> I can add these up while you're speaking if you like. I'm just add them up. Sure. If that's helpful. Okay. okay. I think we have any. So. Last time I looked. So, um, that's so, pretty much good. Yeah. Uh, so if you wanna, I I can, Kieran can do this now or or later and. Oh, well, that's good. I, do you wanna take that with you? Yeah. Sure. Right there we go. You can yeah. take that. Right. Get that one. Before. The two year one, which is okay. Yeah. Great. So uh, the board is in agreement that we want to include the two year, correct? Yeah. Yes. I, I do. Yes. So, yes, sir. Okay. Definitely. So uh, sounds can, like a plan. You can talk about it and just let me know if you want to go forward. And then if, if you're interested, I'll prepare okay. a contract and get it over to Karen for you to take a look at. And okay, that's we'll, great. We'll take it from there. Excellent. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks.
It's good to see you. Nice to meet you. Good to see you sure. again live. Yep. Always a pleasure, Carolyn. Absolutely. And good seeing you. Thanks. We'll, we'll talk you some too. more at some point. You and the other one. Public input? Bob? Have you made a decision on whether to use Rick for the auction of the properties? Or are you still considering what to do? I would say that we are going to use them, yes, because we want to get the most amount of money for these properties. Do you think that might be a conflict of interest where he's the no. top? Okay. I have another question, if you don't mind. 